Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Steve Erickson here at Big Rock Aikikai in Calgary. Uh, before I get started, I want to give a huge thank you to Anita and her organizational team for putting together this one-of-a-kind event. Anita, I can't tell you how grateful I am for your tireless efforts. And I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say thanks so much for um, all that you've done. Today, I'm going to share with you the solo practice method that I've been using for the past 15 months. At the heart of it is simply remembering or trying to remember uh, Osawa Sensei's teachings. Um, if we are lucky enough to see Sensei this fall, which is still looking a little bit sketchy, um, that'll make it two years since his last seminar here in Canada. And it feels like a terribly long time to be away from Sensei for me. And uh, to be quite honest, I'm a little afraid of uh, running off course. So I'm working really hard to remember what Sensei has uh, been teaching us in all the years that he's come. My intent today is to share what I remember um, about uh, some of our primary forms. My uh, memory's not perfect, so I appreciate your forgiveness for all my mistakes. <laughs> We're going to do Ikkyo with a focus on having the best posture we can. We're going to do Iriminage with a focus on having soft knees. We're gonna practice Shihonage with a focus on using our hands in a centered way. And then we're gonna finish with Tenshinage, trying to put these three key elements together. So let's begin with Ikkyo. Let me do it once and I'll talk about the details um, and then we can do it together afterwards, all right? Create good kumai. Front foot faces front. Knees are soft. Back is straight. Imagine the attack is shinuchi. Slide in to connect with your partner's elbow. Make sure you collect your back foot. Collecting the back foot's really important. When you leave it behind, you become prone to leaning. But when you collect it, you can stay nice and straight. Hands are open at this point. Slide forward again and drop your hands. Grip Uke's arm here. Step forward and collect your back foot again. Descend nice and slow, putting your front knee down. Normally, for Ikkyo, we would lay the second knee down, lay our partner's arm down. But for this solo practice method, I'm going to skip this last part because it lets us transition sides more easily. Open your hands, stand, pivot, and continue. Let's do it together, step by step, please. Create good kumai. Slide forward, connect with Uke's elbow, collect your back foot, hands are open. Slide again, dropping your hands, gripping Uke's arm. Step forward, collect your back foot and descend, inside knee goes down. Open your hands to signal releasing Uke's arm, stand up and pivot. One more time together, slide forward, connecting with Uke's elbow, collect your back foot. Think about having the best posture you can here. Slide forward again, dropping your hands, gripping Uke's arm. Step forward, collect your back foot again, descend, placing your inside knee down. Let's do it four times, left, right, left, right. I won't talk about it. I'll just do it along with you.
when you do these four, try to pause at each point and remember the details. Doesn't have to be a long pause. Just try to do it really intentionally, really thoughtfully, imagining what Sensei looks like when he does it, how he moves and what he says. So that's four times, uh, movement by movement. Let's try to do it four more times together, but without any pausing, without any haste, no hurry at all. Just move from beginning to end, uh, thoughtfully and smoothly. All right, let's move on from Ikkyo to Iriminage. Let me do it once, talking about the, the details, all the parts, and then we'll do it together a couple of times. Create good kumai, front foot facing front, knees soft, back straight, Imagine Shomenuchi. As Shomenuchi comes, reach up, turn your palm upward and receive Shomenuchi right on your forehead. At the same time, collect your feet underneath your center. Step forward, reaching towards Uke's neck and start to turn towards Uke. Keep your knees nice and soft at this point. Continue your pivot until you're facing the same direction as Uke and shift your front foot to the side. Withdraw the back foot, pivot and step to throw. Pivot to do the other side. Let's do it together. Imagine Shomenuchi. Raise your hand to receive it and collect your feet underneath your center. Create as much softness in your knees as you can. Step forward to take hold of Uke's neck and begin to turn towards Uke. Keep the softness in your knees as you step forward. Complete this pivot facing direction of the attack Make sure you're connecting his palm facing up. Shift to the side. This shifting to the side is the uprooting of Uke. Maintaining the softness in your knees, withdraw your back foot, pivot, and step to throw. One more time together. Receive the showman. Collect your feet underneath your center. Feel the softness in your knees. Step forward, 
starting to face Uke, connecting with Uke's neck. Finish this pivot and shift to the side. Make sure your palm is facing forward. Shift the front back foot to the side, pivot and step forward to throw. So whole time you wanna feel softness in your legs. Let's do four together, step by step, but without all the talking. Okay, let's do four more of Iribinage, but this time let's not stop at each part. Let's let the, the movement kind of flow from beginning to end. No speed, no haste, no hurry, lots of thoughtfulness, but um, some smoothness to go along with it. Okay, we're done with Iriminage. Let's move on with Shihonage. Imagine Kata Tedori. Create good Kumai, front foot facing front, back foot in line, knees are nice and soft, back is straight. Don't reach far from yourself. Keep your hand right over top of your front foot. Shift to the side, creating the angle for entry. Grip Uke's wrist. Your hands are right in line with your center now. Move forward without reaching too far and without stepping too far. Raise your hands, pivot to a full 180 degrees, keeping your hands in line with your center. Feet are collected here, posture is good. Enter and deliver Uke to the mat. Rise and pivot, let's try the other side. Together please, here we go. 
make sure not to reach too far because reaching too far makes it difficult to pull your front foot. Let your hand be right over top of your foot. And when you shift your body, try not to move the hand uke is holding. So we have shifted, we've taken a good grip of uke. We are not reaching too far and we're not stepping too far. Two comfortable steps, hands are still centered. Raise your hands, pivot your body 180 degrees. You've collected your feet. Posture is good, hands are still in your center. Slide forward and deliver uke to the mat. Let's do it one more time together. Shift your body to the side. Put your hands in your center line. Grip Uke's wrist. Enter without reaching or stepping too far. Raise your hands, pivot a full 180 degrees. I'm gonna move a little bit now so that you can see the, the finishing posture. So in theory, Uke is still holding onto my hand. But with the last move, we separate. This separation lets me not be overly weighted forward. Let's me be in line in Hanmi. One more time together. Shift, grip, hands are in your center line. Slide forward. Raise your hands and pivot. Enter and drive Uke to the mat. Let's do it four times together, but without all the talking. Try to do each part um, separately with a, a pause at each movement. Let's do four more together, but without the pauses. Flow smoothly, but with no haste, no speed, no hurry.
Club. Okay, that completes Shihonage. We've done three out of the four primaries. We did Ikkyo with a focus on good posture. We did Idiminage with a focus on having soft knees. And we just completed Shihonage with a focus on keeping our hands centered, using our hands in a centered way. The, the last technique I wanna do is Tenshinage. Obviously, we're going to do it from Ryo Fidori because that's the only attack we do Tenshinage from. We're going to try to bring all three points together, posture, soft knees, and centered hands, and uh, do Tenshinage with a focus on all of those things. Okay? Let me talk about it once, and then we'll do it together. Create good kumai, front foot facing front, back foot in line, knees soft, back straight. Offer your hands. They are stacked one on top of the other. This helps you to have good kumai. When I, when I put my hands side by side, I always tend to square up. But letting my hands be stacked really helps me keep a good structure in hanmi. One, sweep the lower hand towards you. To do this with your body, front foot has to shift a little bit. It has to turn. Two, raise the upper hand. This is how Uke's back foot is lifted. Three, withdraw your body to create space. And four, step forward and throw downward. Sensei has said Uke should be here in front of you, not projected away, but rather in front. In fact, Uke should be able to hold on to this hand. So make sure that you're not pulling this rear hand back too far. Both hands are in front of you. Okay, let's do it together twice. And I'll talk about the other details one more time. Offer your hands. Sweep the lower hand in by pivoting. Raise the upper hand, withdraw, shift to the side, keep your hands in front of you. Because we are doing this slowly, you have to really clearly collect your feet over this point to have good posture. And then step forward to throw, keeping your hands in front. One more time on the other side together. Sweep the lower hand in while you pivot. Raise the upper hand to uproot Uke's back foot. Shift to the side to create space. Collect your body over that one point and step forward. Okay, let's do it four times together without all the talking, but still step by step. Try to be uh, thoughtful about what's happening at each point.
All right, that was four times step by step. Let's do our last four executions smoothly, but with no haste, no hurry. All right, everyone. That's the bulk of my class. Ikkyo iriminage, shihonage, and tenshinage. Really, really simple forms. Um, while the pandemic has been terrible for me and for my dojo, it certainly has been a blessing in disguise in some ways. I have been forced to look inside and find everything that's in there that I remember that senses uh, taught me or taught us. Um, interesting, interestingly enough, what I have discovered mostly is how much I don't remember, how much I don't know, which is great. It's a, a good spark for uh, getting started again. Um, thanks very much for attending my class. And I think we got about 10 minutes for questions, so please feel yes. free. Okay, that was a wonderful class, Steve. Three words, clarity, stability, and precision. A very enjoyable class. Yes, I do have some questions for you. Okay. Michelle, thank you very much. The first one is, any tips for Iriminage on how to keep the neck holding arm and engage in solo practice? I, I'm finding it difficult to simulate. Uh, simulate uh, taking a hold of UK's neck and connecting them to your body. Is yeah, I think what it's mean? probably what it meant, yes. Okay, you know what? I have found exactly the same thing. Um, so there's a, there's a really uh, important transition where the initial connection with the arm becomes a connection to your body. It's it's difficult to feel because, or it's difficult to simulate because at that time, Uke's body is physically becoming connected to yours. So, you, so you, you need to be really stable and soft for that to happen well. To simulate it, I just remember that anytime my knees aren't soft, I, I don't have any power naturally from my core. So uh, that's why my focus for Yiri Minagi was to have soft knees. And second, I just, bring my hand as close to my body as, as I can to, to remind myself that's where Uke is going. And besides that, I'm not sure I can offer too much. It's a really good question and it's, and it's a difficult part. With, without an Uke that gives you a direct, immediate, honest feedback can be hard to know. Really good question. Besides, I have to say, I have many com comments thanking you, uh, Steve, okay? But I have another question. Do the feet need to be per perpendicular in the starting motion in Shihonagi? Perpendicular, starting. Mm, perpendicular, perpendicular, perpendicular. Is the question regarding the, the Hanmi that we stand in or is the question regarding the position that we move to? Probably to the first one. Hanmi. So what I remember Sensei saying is, Front foot always faces front, no matter what. But your back foot doesn't have to be perpendicular to your front foot, so long as it's in line. Our bodies are all different. And this is my own stuff. So Sensei said, just put the back foot in line. He never said it has to be, per your foot has to be perpendicular to the front foot. But what I've noticed is 
like we're all different. We have different hip flexibility. Our bodies are constructed differently. Some people have a very easy time in putting their back foot perfectly sideways and they can move fast and be strong. Other people, it's not like that. I, I never try to make it perpendicular. I just try to put it in line and position myself so I can move freely. That's what I think. Okay. Do you, another question I have here. Do you, do you have advice as to not feel tippy uh, when having the feet, the feet right next to each other in a nice, in a very narrow stance with bendy knees? Great question. So what Sensei said when I asked him about this issue, because when I first met Sensei, we tried to integrate this very uh, close stance everywhere. But my beginners had a terrible time with it because really feet close together when you're not uh, accustomed to it and when, you're not, when your body hasn't um, trained for a long time, it makes you tippy, just like the questioner said. So what I, what I do now, and it's, it's based on Sensei saying, it's okay for beginners to have their feet further apart. Don't force them to have their feet close together. So however my students need to stand in order to be stable, okay. As they get better and better, then I urge them, bring their feet in a little bit, bring their feet in a little bit, bring their feet in a little bit. Because it's hard, really hard to catch the heart of Sensei's movements with these big stances. They, it just doesn't work. But in the beginning, you need them to let your body develop a uh, sense of stability and to let your legs strengthen, to let your core strengthen. It's like, a, I think a natural progress. Feet come together eventually in time and it may be different for everyone. So just let it happen when it's uh, uh, natural. Okay, another question. Uh, Erickson Sensei, during Shihonagi, I often hear that we should not raise our hands during the turn, but leave them low and duck under them. What is your view? So when, when I'm practicing with an uke and they're holding me and I'm moving, I have a feeling of how strong they are and how they are, like whether they're pulling or not pulling, how they're reacting to my movements, I, I have it in their grip. So at that, in that way, I know whether or not I can raise my hands a little bit or whether I had better keep my hands really low. Okay. But for the purpose of solo practice, I didn't focus on that because you really need to have an uke to know what you can do and what you can't do. And Sensei has never said to me, stop raising your hands, keep your hands low or you won't be able to throw. I've never heard him say that. So I, I, don't, I don't teach in that way. If I were doing shihonage, and my uke were able to pull me off because I raised my hands too high, well, then I just stopped raising my hands so high. But in the solo practice, I, I don't know if it's so necessary. The practice was designed to remember that our hands need to stay in front of us. And that's so much easier to do when you lift them a little bit. Okay. I hope that makes sense. It does make sense. Thank you very much, Justine. Uh, I think I have no more questions, but a lot of comments that the people appreciated your class. Okay. Thank you very much, Michelle, for all of your help with the class. I appreciate it.